good roar, Captain Hamilton. Oh, get me away from this thing. It looks calm out there, but it, it's rougher than you think. Oh, it does look nice and calm, you're right. It's the current. Can't you see it? It's very nasty ripples. It's practically a storm surge. I think if the wind had been in another direction... Oh, I'll come here. Don't you know me at all by now? Come on, let's walk. All right, thank you. Oh, I've got used to being this relaxed. <laughs> What's it going to be like getting back to college, having to smarten ourselves up? I really like you like this, it's nice. Remember when we met on that train and you were so self-conscious about your shoes? I don't. Oh, I remember it vividly. I remember you struggling with the suitcase. So, do you want the good news? Oh no. It means there's bad news too, are there? None, none at all. While you're out, I checked with the hotel and they said we could stay another night. And I thought, why not? Extend this holiday as long as we can. <laughs> Extend the celebration. Celebration? Oh, you know, um, the summer of work. The fact that it's practically all done now. And perhaps we could celebrate us too. I'm not absolutely sure what you mean. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Absolutely Hamilton. Oh, stop it. I don't say it like that. You do, then that's fine. Ready to go home soon? Not in the slightest. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> oh, look at these houses. Oh, if I had found someone I could row with, perhaps I could be living here. Hey, I can row. <laughs> well, that's good, because I think I might be in love. <laughs> In love. Oh, those two houses up on the cliff, look. Oh, which one should we have, the red or the blue? It's tricky. Why not both? Oh, go on, pick one. Um, okay, blue. My choice, exactly. Oh, almost like I knew what you were going to say. Well, either house looks big enough for me. Maybe more than me one day. A dog? Why not? A little someone else to play with it, perhaps? What about your work? Wouldn't you want to finish that first? Well, finish work before I settle down, you mean? Yes. Yeah, I love my work. You know I do. I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to keep going as long as I can. I don't see why it has to be one or the other. Would you give up work to have children? I hadn't really thought about it. Immersed in your work, no doubt. Blinkers on. I keep thinking about all these bright young women I'm teaching and I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared that despite all they've achieved, despite the fact that they're walking out into the world with a degree from Cambridge, the first thing they'll be asked is how fast can you type? Don't be so pessimistic. It's not pessimism, I see it. Even the jobs they get they're not expected to keep once they've had children. All it needs is people to stand up to it. But Molly was taking a stand. Do you think that changed anything? Not a woman this time. Women have been making a stand, throwing themselves under horses since the suffragettes. We need men to start fighting for it. It's not as simple as all that. Isn't it? I hope you do make a stand. It won't become part of all that. It's not easy, you know. A lot of people are still living in the dark ages about all this. Your professor, for one, I'll bet. I think you're probably right there. He doesn't know about any of this, does he? This? This this work? Exactly. The work we've done. You will tell him, won't you? Yeah. It might be difficult. What? It could be tricky to... You're not backing out of our partnership now. No, I'll do it. I will. You promised me that. 
promise you that. Good. Happy? Happy. <laughs> you? Very. Marvelous to see you do come in. Take a seat. I have to say, I'm delighted. Oh, you read the final draft? Of course, all the salient points. I must say it's very impressive. You think so? Thank you. Not at all. It's your work. I think the direction you took it gave it something of real value. Well, as I say, quite apart from the climate side of things, the method you developed to track radiation, I can see it having far-reaching implications and not just in your own field. It's marvellous. I'm glad you think so. Yeah, First-rate piece of work, Peter. First-rate. Th this other name on here, Dr. Clara McKirick, I presume we can drop that. Drop it? Why would I do that? Oh, well, um, I understand you probably had some little research assistants, but, uh, well, we all have secretaries. <laughs> we, we just don't usually put the name on the front cover of the paper. What are you suggesting? Tell me, have you seen your friend Joseph recently, Samuel? I have. Doing so well in their new positions. I would dearly love to see the same for you, Peter. And more for you, in fact. Well, thank you. It will be so well deserved after all these years, especially after the risk I took. Risk? A boy from a grammar school, first in his family to make it to university, you know what I'm saying. It's been really wonderful to give you this opportunity. I would just hate you to throw it away by misattributing your own hard work, that's all, for whatever reasons you might have. Throwing it away? What do you mean? I mean, there is a world of possibility out there for you. Hmm. Well, as I say, it really is very good, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. Yeah. <clears throat> You've given it to someone else already. I knew a few who I thought might be interested. I thought you'd be pleased. In fact, I think you might want to prepare yourself for being the center of attention for a little while. I'm sure you would be able to cope, but I think it's perhaps not quite the sort of thing you'd like to foist on a young woman's shoulders. I see. And okay to foist upon a man's, of course. Quite. And I've no doubt you'd be up to the challenge yourself. With this name on here, there is a good chance it will cause problems. I'm sure I could handle them. <laughs> this isn't all about you, I'm afraid. It could be problems for everyone. Clara was close with Molly Shannon, wasn't she? The one suspected of being a communist spy. I'm, I'm afraid I don't know. Well, it's true. How close they were is the real question. Clara joined Molly on that anti-British protest march, I hear. People are saying Clara's a spy now. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's started digging. Yet. A lot of people, very important people, believe you are either with this country or against it. Some of the benefactors of this college, for example. My father... <laughs> He used to call this university one of the greatest contributions Britain has made to the world. I would agree with that. 
Wouldn't you? One of the greatest. Really? Well, it, it does some great work. It does? I'd hate to be the one to undermine it. The affair with this Cambridge Four business has been bad enough. <laughs> we can't change the past, Peter. But we can learn from it. Before we fool ourselves into remembering it too kindly. Now, with this name on here, and the associations one might make, you see what I'm saying? If you met Clara, I'm, I'm sure you'd agree her name should be on the paper. Good God, Peter, I am trying to make you understand something. <laughs> this is precisely the way the rod sets in. It's the slow knife. <sighs> Members of this university were recruited to spy for the Soviet Union ten years ago. Now, members of this university are demanding we lay down our weapons. The only defense we have against the very same foreign power. What happens in ten years' time? And what happens to the integrity of this college in ten years? If you share your work on a whim with a girl you've taken a fancy to. And what happens ten years after that? cannot survive by making oneself vulnerable. That is why this university is still here. That is why I am still here. I hope you understand how much I care about your success. It's so common for work to fade into obscurity after it's published. It would be a shame if yours were denied my full-throated support, especially after so many years. I've spent years working on this. I cannot make your decisions for you, Peter. By all means, publish with Clara as a co-author if you're feeling generous, but if you do, you'll have to take your chances. It would be difficult for me to bring to bear any influence I have. By way of illustration, I have an address in Whitehall to give you. Thank you. Fred, I can't tell you much more now, but he's a good man. Cambridge man. And you may find there's one more reason to leave Clara out of things. I'm sure things will become clear soon. I think you've made things very clear. Well, let me know what you decide. Just knock any time. My door is always open.
Dr. Hamilton. Peter. How do you do? So good to meet you. How do you do? Excuse me, I won't be a moment. Still three o'clock, yes? Oh no, no need to reschedule. This won't take long. It should be very quick. Right then, please do take a seat. Delighted you could make it to London. I do hope you get the time to enjoy it a little too, considering how busy you've been recently. You sound busy yourself. Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Time waits for no man, eh? Anyway, I imagine you're wondering why we asked you here. Well, it can't have surprised you that your field of study has been of increasing interest to us especially since the war. Since the war? I didn't know that. Oh, of course. The paper is going very well here. You know about that? Oh, yes, your professor, John Hargreaves, passed us a copy. And it's impressive, the amount of information you've managed to gather. Although I imagine the process of gathering it was rather difficult on your limited budget. I, uh, I, I... Traveled, uh, found good places to take measurements. You did. As I said, we were most impressed and wanted to make you an offer. A reward, even. What, what kind of offer? Well, you've no doubt taken your budget to its limits by now. What would you say if I could guarantee you a practically unlimited budget for further study? Ensure you had the best equipment, like the Americans. Take you right to the heart of things. The, the heart of things? I believe you traced the source of the radiation back to Antarctica, didn't you? Well, well it was um, me and, and someone else. I see. Well, whatever the details, I'd say that warrants further study on location, wouldn't you? It does. I'm glad you agree. We could place you with the Falkland Islands Dependency Survey working in Antarctica. Scientist bots. Happy amateurs. Very passionate, like yourself. Of course, you'd probably have to sort a few things out with the other name we saw on the paper before you go. I hope that wouldn't be too difficult, considering what's on offer. Uh, the other name, um, Clara, you mean? 
Ah, lovely name. Probably for the best she wouldn't be able to go. Oh, not my say-so, I'm afraid. It's run a bit like the army down there. No women allowed. I, uh, I don't think she'd like the idea. I can assure you this is bigger than any one person. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm not sure what this is yet. I see. Well, you signed those papers on your way in earlier, so I'm at liberty to tell you a little more. Things in the Antarctic, they've been a little strained recently. Lots of vested interests, territorial claims overlapping. Some sides wanting to secure the resources under the ground. Now, this kind of thing has been going on for decades, of course. W what kind of thing? Oh, the Germans were flying over there, dropping swastikas in big circles. Before the war, that is. All a bit ridiculous, really. Now, I'm afraid it's the Soviets we've got to contend with. Bit of a royal mess, if you ask me. Still, we're trying to work with them. Why would you do that? Isn't it dangerous? The idea is to avert danger, I believe. It should all be in everyone's interest, you see. Every country signed up to something called the Antarctic Treaty. All a rather clever bit of politicking that happened behind the scenes a few years ago. Set up to ensure that Antarctica is used for strictly peaceful purposes. No weapons are to be used. No one can make any future claims on the land. Now, if it sticks, everyone will be frightfully happy. Every side content that they've staked their claim. No more aggression, let's say. No World War Three, you mean? Quite. We've managed to placate the Soviets so far. This is all strictly confidential, but the sounds coming from Whitehall are not good. We're rather worried that it might all fall through. How worried are you? Worried enough, but there's no immediate cause for alarm. Well, in addition to the climate science you'd be able to do, tracking the radiation in the clouds and so forth, we'd like you to inform us of any other sources of radiation out there, what the readings are. If there are any bombs being set off on the continent, it's important that we know as much as we can about them. We don't know what the Soviets might do next. You'd be using the very best equipment, as I said, useful for your career, useful for us. This is still climate science, yes? Absolutely right. The less we're involved, the better, really. But as I say, if you can help us in this small way, it would certainly help that career of yours. How can you help, if you don't mind me asking? Well, after speaking with a few people, Professor Hargreaves, for example, I'm sure that whatever your academic ambitions, after working on something as important as this, you'd have no trouble progressing. And, if nothing else, think of the adventure of it. What a reward it would be for all your hard work. What do you think? Y you want me to decide now? Oh, not straight away, but time is rather tight. We'd need an answer soon. Sorry, I've got a meeting in Westminster in 20 minutes. We'll have to cut this short. It's been very good to meet you. Do let me know. And if this Clara thing feels like a sticking point, all I can say is sometimes we all have to answer to something greater than ourselves. Why not think of it as an opportunity for you and to do what's right? What's right? I'm sure you understand. Women come and go. This is for your country.
I mean, I might have enjoyed it if I was a ten-year-old boy, but it was just boys and their toys again. It's just an adventure story. I do all your adventure fantasies involve so much shooting, they're presenting themselves as if they're heroes instead of the land grabbers they actually were. Think of it as a bit of harmless escapism, that's all. I know what you're about to see, that they were just men testing themselves against the world. I do hear where you're coming from. Stop it now. And another thing, where were all the women? I can't have won. She was a cook. It was only supposed to be a bit of fun. I'm only teasing. I, I do see what you mean, really. It's depressing. <laughs> Just turn the radio on, would you? <laughs> of course. urged for calm after news from Washington emerged tonight that the Antarctic Treaty is on the brink of falling through. Neither Britain, the United States, nor Soviet Russia could reach a deal. And, in an increasingly nervous political atmosphere, there is now the risk that there will be no agreement to stop any act of aggression in Antarctica. After pinning the blame firmly on what he called Russia's continuing aggression, the Prime Minister warned that the next steps are far from clear, and that in this climate of mistrust, the world needed to stay vigilant. It remains to be seen who will make the next move. Hey, stop shooting, you mad fool! Oh, no. oh he's hit the engine! Hit the engine! What are you? What have you done? It's you, mate. Are you out of your mind? Sorry, mate. I thought you were a bloody Russian. Not a bad shot, though. I gotta catch us a gal for our tea. You hit the vehicle. The engine's dead. You satisfied with yourself? Never felt better. Took the last of those painkillers and a drop of whiskey sorted me right out. I thought I'd go for a walk. You found whiskey? I had that all along. Save it for special occasions. Birthdays, Christmas, crashing in the middle of bloody nowhere. Is the radio on? 
Ah, oh, yeah, had to get away from those beeps. Better out here. <laughs> Believe me, it's not better out here. Why don't you leave me in peace? Well, let's, let's get you inside. Ah, oh, yeah, good idea. More whiskey. feeling now? Ah, uh, a bit shitty. But better. Yeah, I just, uh, just needed that... that sleep. Mate, ah, uh, that bloody noise on the radio was driving me mad. Do you know there's a, a Russian voice that appears on that channel once in a while? Really? Yeah, sounded urgent, whatever it was. Uh, same phrase over and over. Ah, oh, Jesus, it's leg. Do you think the Russians are still out here? Uh, bloody well hope not. Why? Why not? We need help. They don't want us here, you know. Why the hell should they save us, eh? We're all stuck out here. We're in the same boat, aren't we? Whatever you found out there, you weren't supposed to see it. If you think some Soviet's gonna be happy to see you get out of here alive, you've got another thing coming. And personally, if I saw one out here, I'd make sure he didn't make it home either. Before he did the same to me. Alpha Romeo Lima. This is Faraday. Faraday station calling. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Uh, we picked up a distress call from this frequency. Uh, can you hear me? Over. That's right. We need help. Urgently. You're very strange. Your position. Over. Floyd, what's our position? Uh, 82 degrees south, 19 west. We're at 82 degrees south, 19 west. Hello? Hello, can you, t can you tell me what's happening? Why is everywhere deserted? Over. That's right. We're, we're sending a rescue party out. Hold on tight. Over and out. Wait, wait, don't go. They're gone. Ah, oh, ah, oh, that again. It's too bloody sinister. Turn it off. Ain't that a beauty? I can't believe it. <laughs> They're coming. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, have a little faith, please. They'll come. Well, I hope so, mate. We're both in line for knighthoods if we make it out, that's for sure. What do you mean? Your government loves to give out honors to failed Antarctic explorers. Otherwise, the whole endeavor would just look nuts. Shackleton, remember him? Marooned most of his men on an island for a year. Uh, no, it can't have been like that. Robert Scott, he got the polar medal, didn't even make it home. Heroic failures. <sighs> Just like us. Hey, how does Sir Peter Hamilton sound? Uh, anyway, that's if we make it out. <sighs> Hope they find us before the food runs out. Well, I found you again, didn't I? Yeah. You did, mate. You did. Which reminds me, how did you find the plane again? Oh, dumb luck. No, no, come on, seriously. Well, no, it was lucky. Spotting the flares that you sent up. What's that? 
I never sent up any flares, mate. Sorry? Uh, the flare box was empty. Not been checked in years, my guess. Bloody panicked me for a while. Are you saying there's someone else here? Search me. Why don't you take a look out? You see anything? It's too hazy. Wait! There it is. That's not far away. So there is some here. Do you think they're friendly? Chances are no. We're gonna need more food soon. What are you doing? This is from World War One. What do you believe? Why are you playing with that thing? Here. One bullet left. Why the hell do I need this? We know there's something going on, but we don't know who that could be out there. All I'm saying is, be on your guard. I'm not shooting anyone. Just raise it up when you approach, that's all. Make sure you're the one in charge. If you doubt, make sure you're the one that fires first. There's only one bullet. Just the one. <laughs> you better hope there aren't two of them. So? You gonna wait around here all day then? Are you gonna be alright? My whiskey, mate. I'll be happy as Larry. And... I've got this. So, just keep that gun raised, you'll be fine. Make sure you don't get that knighthood posthumously. <laughs>